kind of crazy being here for the first time as owners. But guys, location, location, location. Look at this. Like, Look at all this free marketing for your property. So when you buy your own property, you're looking for something like this. Hey, you ever wonder what it's like closing on a multifamily apartment? What happens the day of closing with the bank transfer and signing all the papers and taking over ownership of the property? Well, lucky for you, today we are closing on a 56 unit apartment. When I say we, I don't mean a big equity group, I don't mean a group of investors, I mean my wife and I who's upstairs working right now. And I'm gonna bring you along with me. Why? Because I know if I was looking into doing this, if I was looking into investing into apartments, I would want to know everything about it. And I, it's hard to find like a raw vlog of the day of closing. So I'm gonna bring you along with me and show you everything that happens on the day of closing as much as I can. I'm gonna, we're gonna go to the bank, we're gonna go to the closing table, we're gonna go to the property, we're gonna talk with the lender, my lawyer's gonna be there. It's big, this is the biggest deal we've ever closed. Uh, full transparency, my biggest deal up until this point has been 16 units, so now we're doing a 56 unit. Again, just husband and wife duo. Uh, so a little nervous, a little excited, and combination of those things. So why don't you come along with me? We're gonna go to the bank first. We'll talk about it along the way. I'll teach you as much as I can along the way so you can learn how to do the same. Let's go to the bank, let's talk real estate. All right, so we are just outside the bank here. I, I don't know, I don't feel comfortable walking in a bank with a big old camera out, so I didn't film all that, but I've got the confirmation, the wire sent. This is the biggest wire I've ever sent for the biggest purchase or investment I've ever made. And th this is what I wanna to talk to you about here. It is scary, guys, when you are investing your own hard-earned money. I see why a lot of people, when they do apartments, especially apartments this size, size, they'll syndicate because you're investing other people's money. When you're investing your own money, it is a scary thing. But two things I want to talk to you about, talk to you about with this. Number one, we have to, if we want to set our family up for the rest of our life. If you want, if you have the churches, the churches, the charities, the causes that you want to support, like I do, we have to practice delayed gratification. That means we are investing our money. We are investing our time, our energy, right? Uh, into the future, not for today. Like today, man, I could have taken a lot of trips, you know, done a lot of stupid things with this money, right? For enjoyment today. But something Jim Rohn says I, I love is discipline weighs ounces, regret weighs tons, right? And with money, with investing, with financial freedom, it is a delayed gratification thing. We are working hard today. And if you're wondering like, well, Tony, how do you, how did you get this money if you're not raising capital, if it's just you and your wife doing this? Guys, my message is build your earned income first. Like I built a business, I work in my business, I grow my business, online business coaching, online telehealth uh, education, all those things. I built an online coaching business as a registered dietitian. I help other health fitness professionals grow and scale their online businesses. Then my wife and I take the profits, as much of the profit as we can from that business and we delay gratification and we go buy real estate. Real estate is a very slow, way to get very, very wealthy long-term, right? It could be easy to go spend this money. It could be easy to go, you know, whatever, just, just, just spend the money today. But the goal is we invest so heavily today that one day in the future, these investments take care of us for the rest of our life and take care of not just us, but our family. Again, the, the people we want to help support churches, charities, causes, things like that. So a lot of people ask me, well, it's so scary to invest. It is, it absolutely is. Like guys, don't make, make no mistake about it. When I, when I send the wire, cause this is now my eighth closing on an apartment building. Whenever I send the wire and each time it's been incrementally like more money, I get nervous. I get scared. I get this like nause nauseous feeling. I have a mentor, I have a coach that I can talk to, which is so huge. And that's why, hey, if you're trying to grow your business on your own, or you're trying to start to invest in real estate, you know, get a mentor. If you wanna look into having me mentor you or potentially work with you, ch uh, check out the link in my bio here. But it is scary, it absolutely is scary. But we only grow when we go outside our comfort zone. If you only do what you're comfortable with, if you only do what you're already good at, if you only do what doesn't scare you, you're never growing number one. And number two, when it comes to investing, and I've invested in my business, I've invested in coaching mentorship, I've invested in real estate, you always feel a little nervous 
but I always defer back to, do I trust what I'm investing into? So when it's my business, do I trust me? Well, damn, if I don't trust me, and if you don't trust you, right? If you're a business owner watching this, who will trust you, right? Who, who would trust you? When I invest in this piece of real estate, do I trust the asset? Do I trust the business plan that I create? Do I trust the, it, it, this has been five months in the making here. So I've had five months to assess the property, assess the deal, assess the debt that we're taking on for this because we're not paying in cash, right? We're taking on debt for this. Yes, I do. And if I trust everything, if I've done my homework, if I've done my due diligence, this isn't like a blind investment. It's not like I just saw a property. I'm like, oh, I'll pay money for that, right? If you trust all of that, you don't fear the investment. And just remember, we only grow when we do what is outside of our comfort zone, when we do something we're not fully comfortable with, right? Because that's how you grow, by stepping outside your comfort zone. So those are just my thoughts. Um, I don't want to pretend or I don't want the perception of like, oh, I just do all this and I, I'm never scared or I'm never nervous or I'm never, you know, just uncomfortable. I've learned you only grow by doing what's uncomfortable, but... But big caveat there, it is up to you in business to do your due diligence. Like investing in real estate, investing in multifamily is a business. My other business is a business. No one's gonna save you, right? Like once this once this wire transfers, once we sign the dotted line today, once we take over the keys, no one's coming to save us. We have to save ourselves. We have to do the work. We have to trust the business plan we've created and trust ourselves that when things go wrong, not if, when things go wrong and when unexpected things happen, because in a business, the only constant is change, that we will figure it out. FIO, we have to figure it out in business. So that's just what I wanna share. We're gonna go get ready. We're gonna go to the closing, kind of bring you there. Hopefully you maybe get to see my lawyer, see your, our lender, maybe talk to the lender a little bit, then we'll get to the property. So hey, if this is valuable, if this is helpful, let me know, leave a comment below. If you have any questions about anything we're doing or talking about today, leave a comment below and we'll see you at the next step. All right, so we just wrapped up at the closing. That was a very long closing. It, was, yeah. it took a couple hours, yeah. uh, kind of like a lot of back and forth, mm -hmm. just on some last minute items. Uh, they actually endorsed all the rent checks over to us, mm -hmm. which we've never done before. So that was kind of a new thing, but we are here on the property, first time as owners. So let's just really quickly talk through, we are already starting to implement our business plan, Correct. right? We have one vacancy. Mm -hmm. So like, what what's the process? We have a vacant unit. What what happens as owners and operators? Yeah, so we're gonna walk through it and assess everything, yes. assess if there's any damage and get the unit turn going. So. Uh, about how long would it take for us to have a unit turn? I would say like, depending on, on what needs to be done, Two, two to four days. Two to four days. And we're not physically turning right. the unit. We're using our contractor to do it. And what's really good about actually having one vacant unit out of 56 is a couple things. Number one, like back when our first apartment was a seven unit, if you have one vacant unit, you're, you're feeling it on the yeah, expense side. Right. It's kind of crazy now to be like, wow, we have 55 other paying tenants. Right. So it's like not that big of a deal. But now we can test out market rent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which we're excited about. We're, we're actually yeah. very excited about. We don't have to wonder like, okay, was our business plan correct on what we could raise the market rent to, now we're gonna get to test it. Mm -hmm. A tenant moved out before we even took ownership. Right. Now we're gonna turn the unit, up, upgrade it, update it as needed, mm -hmm. fix any issues, bring it to market rent, be able to test it out because it's so important. So now we can really start to decide right. and see what market rent is. So let's mm -hmm. go take, take a look at the unit, right? But again, guys, what we're trying to do is show you things we've learned as owners and operators, right? The Everyone says, congrats, you close, congrats, you close. <laughs> The work just be, it's like the work now is just beginning. Yeah. We also got some good luck. <laughs> yeah, we got some good luck, yeah. right? Some people said good luck, but now the real work, now the return on investment mm -hmm. begins. Now is when it decides, is this a good investment or not? Right. Based on your operations, operations are key. And that's why like us, we are owners and operators. We're not just owners. We don't just sign our name on the contract or on the debt we are operating the business plan. So I think that's a big thing that we've mm -hmm. learned. Like yeah. in multifamily real estate, the money is made in operations and being hands-on with it and, and controlling the asset. That's why you buy apartments because you can control the value of it, right? You can control the appreciation. So that's what we're excited to do. So let's go take a look at the unit. Maybe show you guys a couple of things I love about this. Again, if you're enjoying this content, let me know, leave a comment below. Let's go check out the unit. All right guys, so first, a little loud here, but guys, See that, it's a main road. That is all pure drive-by traffic, okay? It's kind of crazy being here for the first time as owners. 
But guys, location, location, location. Look at this. Like, look at all this free marketing for your property. So when you buy your own property, you're looking for something like this. If you can get it on a main road in a main metropolitan city, I mean, that's huge. We've got a Starbucks down there, got an LA Fitness down there. I mean, this is what you want. It's one of the biggest things I've learned is being visible to the public. So as you see, we got our sign back there. We're gonna probably replace the sign. I know it's loud, so I'm trying to talk loud, but this gets me excited. I mean, look at, look at the size of this beast, dude. And this is one of the things I loved about it was the drive-by traffic and the drive-by location. And let me know, let me know. You think we should paint it? I wanna get it painted. I wanna get the landscape spruced up. I wanna paint the building like a nice white. Maybe do some like fresh red doors just to make it pop. So let me know, comment below, should we paint the building? What color would you paint it? And do you like the drive-by traffic? Would you invest in a deal like that? Would you invest in a deal like this with us? Let me know. So first look inside the vacant unit. Needs a bit of uh, cleaning up. Nothing too major. Bathroom, actually nice countertops. This is a one bed, one bath. So this property is half two bed, one bath. Half one bed, one bath would be great because two bed, one bath get higher rent premiums. What do you think? First uh, assessment, not too bad. Oh, just really just this carpet. Carpet has to go. Yeah, this one might. This might be able to just. Be fine, we already have some vinyl plank flooring in, which is great because they started like lightly upgrading some of the units, right? Yeah, I think I think he might have tried to patch that. <sighs> You know, when we first started investing, guys, this stuff would scare me so much. I'd be like, oh my God, oh my God, it's so bad, it's so gross. And then as you get into it, you're like, this is just kind of how it goes. It's why when you underwrite a property, when you evaluate a property, you have to you have to underwrite for unit terms, right? And the fact of like, when we used to use third-party management, outside management, we would spend, five, 10, 15,000 on a unit turn. When we took over operations, we were able to reduce that cost to $1,500, $3,000, which significantly boosts our NOI and our profit. Um, something else too people will ask is like, well, why don't you come in and do you know all new stainless steel appliances and brand new cabinets? We're always updating based on the market rent and the area of what the area commands. You don't ever want to over improve a unit because you might not make your return back. It's all about understanding the property, understanding the area. The biggest thing, believe it or not, the biggest thing that tenants move out on isn't necessarily upgraded appliances and things like that. It's deferred maintenance. It's if things aren't working properly or things aren't taken care of. So we, the big thing we spend money on is not just aesthetics, but functionality. Like you want someone to move in, a family to move in in a safe, clean environment. So this is our unit turn here. This is the first one we're gonna have. Big thing that you're gonna get to learn by following along with us on this journey is how this property performs, what we learn from it. This is one of the big, this is the biggest one we've ever done. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you follow, make sure you comment below so you can be part of this journey and learn from us as we go about it. We document our journey so you can learn from us and you can be part of it from the safety of the sidelines. What do you think though? I like this, I like this countertop. I'm digging it. Not bad. Not bad. All that window is broken. That needs to be replaced. We'll have to do that too. But yeah, comment below. Let me know if you have any questions. Okay guys, so a couple quick wrap up thoughts here. First off, thank you so much for you being part of this journey with me. Uh, if you've been following along on my content, you know this has been months in the making. This has been five months in the making to close on this 56 unit apartment deal. But I'm telling you, just being here today, it, it feels like a big step up for us. We knew we had to be done with the small properties. There's nothing wrong, and I wanna address this, there's nothing wrong with starting with a small property. I started with a single family home, right? But if you're really trying to make a business out of this, is what, which is what my wife and I have committed ourselves to doing, you start to discover that with the smaller properties, there's just not much profitability, right? If I own a seven unit and one unit goes vacant out of a seven unit, you're, you're feeling that income loss. If a $5,000 expense happens at a seven unit and you're only getting $1,000 in rent, $7,000, you're not able to cover that expense. But now just being here at a 56 unit apartment, 
I know we're progressing it and there's so much more profitability, there's so much more scale and real estate scale comes from units and buying the right type of units, of course. But my advice to you is get started, get started however you can, right? But buy the biggest property in the best location you can. Now, if you're like, but hey, I don't have the money to do this or I, I, I don't know, right? Remember, we talk about earned income first, building a business, right? So if you're like me, you're from the health fitness space, you need to be doing high ticket online coaching. High ticket online coaching and telehealth education is how I'm able to buy investment properties of this size without investors, okay? Or number two, partner up, right? Partner up with other people, right? You, There's more money out there that needs a good home than there is good multifamily assets. So if you can find a deal, if you can underwrite a deal, if you can get the debt on a deal, again, this this deal came from a broker off market through relationships, through networking. So if you can if I can do those things, you can do those things. If you can get all that, there's the there's the boss right there. But if you can get all of those things, you can find the money for the down payment, okay? Or maybe you're watching this and you're like, Tony, I've got the down payment money. I've got the uh, desire to invest. I've got the capital to invest. I just don't have the time, energy, and resources to go build a business like what you guys have done. Hey, partner with us. Click the link below somewhere in the description here. Fill out the form. Let's have a conversation. Maybe it'd be smart for you to partner with us on a big deal like this. Or if you need help coaching in your business, helping you grow and scale your business so you can start to invest in a property like this, or just make more impact and income with your coaching business or your online education business, fill out the link below or send me a message because I can also help you with that. Guys, thank you so much for being here. What do you think? First day on the property on the 56. It, it feels bigger, right? It, yeah, absolutely. It feels like yeah. we're finally kind of getting out of the mom and pop stuff, yeah, yeah, right? No, it's, it's really exciting. But again, nothing wrong with starting with the mom and pop investments. I mean, what did I say? I said... What did you say? <laughs> She says a lot. She says a lot. What did you say? No, I was like, you know, just certain like requests or like mm -hmm. um, tenant situations. I'm like, now I'm like, okay. You know, where before I'm like, what do we do? What do we do? What right. do we do? But what's right. like learning with one tenant is way easier than learning yes. with 56. Yeah. So, so we're not knocking, there's a lot of construction going on here. We're not knocking the small units, guys, but we've learned. If you want to build, like I was trying to tell them, if you want to build a business out of it, you got to scale, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, an eight unit or a seven unit can only be so profitable. Mm -hmm. And cash reserves, guys, cash reserves is so important. We were even talking with our lender yesterday. They said the big thing they're looking for is working capital and cash reserves. So you can't take your last dollar and go buy this. Oh. Because like, right, we already, look, we have to replace a window. Mm -hmm. We showed you inside that unit. This is an investment. It's a business, but it's an investment business. So you've got your earned income, and then you invest in your portfolio income, or you come partner with people like us and you put some of your money with our money, with other people's money to go buy a big deal like this. So thank you so much for being here as always. Come along with this journey with us. If you have questions, if you enjoyed this content, let us know. We take time out of our day to show and to document so you can learn how to do this. So thank you so much for being here. Comment, like, subscribe. Until next time, see you at the update of the property. Smack that camera.